Hey guys welcome back to another episode, in this video we will be going through our very simple yet profitable, the 5 step, price action trading strategy. If you want more videos more often please smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell, and share this video across your WhatsApp, Facebook accounts, or Twitter to show your support. A very important point before we start. Everything we discuss in this video can be used for currency trading, stock trading, and crypto, because price action stays relatively consistent across different assets, so we're going to go very in-depth in this video. Are you confused with not knowing exactly how, or when, to enter into a trade? With so many different price action patterns, traders can get paralyzed by overanalysis on whether a certain candlestick or pattern is an entry or not. And have you gotten into a trade where it was going in your favor, but you got out too early? It's frustrating to get out of a position only to see the trade go further in the direction of the trade you exited. Let's face it. As a trader, we have many things to analyze at any given time. If you take too long to decide whether it's time to enter into a trade because of your complicated entry rules, it might mean a missed opportunity for you. And if you exit your position too early, then it could affect your profitability in the long run. But what if you had a simple way of knowing exactly when to get in and out of your trade without any complicated analysis? In this video, I will share with you a simple 5-step price action trading strategy to simplify your entries and exits so you will know exactly when it's time to enter or exit a trade. So, only make a trade if it passes this 5-step test. No matter which market you trade, stocks, forex, or futures, each second the markets are open provides an opportunity to trade. Yet not every second provides a high probability trade. In a sea of nearly infinite possibilities, put each trade you consider through a 5-step test, so you'll only take trades that align with your trading plan and offer good profit potential for the risk being taken. Apply the test whether you're a day trader, swing trader or investor. At first it will take some practice, but once you become familiar with the process, it takes only a few seconds to see if a trade passes the test, telling you whether you should trade or not. Step 1. The Trade Setup. The setup is the basic conditions that need to be present in order to even consider a trade. For example, if you're a trend-following trader, then a trend needs to be present. Your trading plan should define what a tradable trend is for your strategy. This will help you avoid trading when a trend isn't there. Think of the setup as your reason for trading. This Euro's United States dollar chart shows an example of this in action. The price is moving lower overall, as represented by the lower swing highs and lows, as well as the price being below a 200-day moving average. Your trade setup may be different, but you should make sure that conditions are favorable for the strategy being traded. If your reason for trading isn't present, don't trade. If your reason for trading the setup is present, then proceed to the next step. Step 2. The Trade Trigger. If your reason for trading is present, you still need a precise event that tells you now is the time to trade. In this case, the price was moving in a downtrend for the entire time, but some moments within that downtrend provide better trade opportunities than others. In this case, price action traders like to sell on new low or high after the price has pulled back to resistance area and close below the price of 1.188. You can see the price form a bearish pin bar pattern and break below the consolidation area. This case shows three possible trade triggers that occur during the Euro's United States dollar downtrend. What your exact trade trigger is depends on the trading strategy you are using. The first is a consolidation area on key resistance. The trade is triggered when the price moves below the low of the consolidation area. Second, another possible trade trigger is a bearish pin bar pattern at resistance zone. A short is triggered when the bearish pin bar closes below the resistance zone or consolidation area. The third trigger to sell is a rally to a new low price following a pullback. So, before a trade is taken though, check to make sure the trade is worth taking. With a trade trigger, you always know where your entry point is in advance. That provides time to check the trade for validity with steps 3 through 5 before the trade is actually taken. 
Step 3. The Stop Loss Having the right conditions for entry and knowing your trade trigger isn't enough to produce a good trade. The risk on that trade must also be managed with a stop loss order. There are multiple ways to place a stop loss. For short trades, a stop loss is often placed just slightly above a recent swing high and for a long trade just slightly below a recent swing low. Another method is called the average true range or ATR stop loss. It involves placing the stop loss order a certain distance from the entry price based on volatility. So, establish where your stop loss will be. Once you know the entry and stop loss price, you can calculate the position size for the trade. Step 4. The Price Target You now know that conditions are favorable for a trade, as well as where the entry point and stop loss will go. Next, consider the profit potential. Choosing a profit target is the next key part of your trading strategy. It requires you work out in advance exactly how much risk you are prepared to take for how much potential reward. The profit target is based on something measurable and not just randomly chosen. There are countless ways in which you can set your profit target using technical indicators and other tools. We will show you the easiest way to set your objective profit target. Using support and resistance to set profit targets. Support and resistance is a powerful concept used by traders to read and interpret price action. It is based on the theory that the price may struggle to break above certain resistance levels or below certain support levels. You can use this to determine profit levels. Using support area. This chart shows an example of how support area can be used to take profit when you have a short position and the market is moving down in your favor. As you can see, after the trade is entered, the price moves downwards to a level of support. At this point, the price struggles to break below the support level and may even reverse. In this example, you should look to take profit where the price first reaches the level of support. So, establish where your profit target based on the tendencies of the market you're trading. Furthermore, a trailing stop loss can also be used to exit profitable trades. If using a trailing stop loss, you won't know your profit potential in advance. That is fine though, because the trailing stop loss allows you to extract profits from the market in a systematic or not random manner. Step 5. The Reward to Risk Strive to take trades only where the profit potential is greater than three times the risk. For example, losing $100 if the price reaches your stop loss means you should be making $300 or more if the target price is reached. In this example, the risk is around 500 pips but the profit potential is 2000 pips. That's a reward to risk ratio of 4 to 1 or 2000 to 500. If using a trailing stop loss, you won't be able to calculate the reward to risk on the trade. However, when taking a trade, you should still consider if the profit potential is likely to outweigh the risk. If the profit potential is similar to or lower than the risk, avoid the trade. That may mean doing all this work only to realize you shouldn't take the trade. Avoiding bad trades is just as important to success as participating in favorable ones. Other Considerations the five-step test acts as a filter so that you're only taking trades that align with your strategy, ensuring that these trades provide good profit potential relative to the risk. Add in other steps to suit your trading style. The bottom line. Make sure conditions are suitable for trading a particular strategy. Set a trigger that tells you now is the time to act. Set a stop loss and target and then determine if the reward outweighs the risk. If it does, take the trade. If it doesn't, look for a better opportunity. Consider other factors that may affect your trading and implement additional steps if required. Here are other examples the five-step test of price action trading.
This may seem like a tedious process, yet once you know your strategy and get used to the steps, it should take only a few seconds to run through the entire list. Making sure each trade taken passes the five-step test is worth the effort. As always, if you learned something new or if you want more videos more often, make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell, and share this video across your WhatsApp, Facebook accounts, or Twitter to show your support. See you next time. Thank you.